So back on the topic of add-ons, we are going to use another one, but this one is also very simple. Um, by the way, you may have just seen me press Shift C to snap my cursor to the center of the scene. I always like it to be there unless I need it somewhere else, I guess. Yeah, it's it's nice to have it right there in the middle. It just makes my, you know, my perfectionist heart even warmer. So with my cursor warmly in the center there, Shift C again to do that, um, I'm going to add in my label. So once again, um, feel free to use your own label, your own aspect ratio, do whatever you want, design your own label. I encourage you to do that. But if you just want to follow along with the tutorial, um, the label file will be available on the Teachable course. And then I will also put it up full screen here for you guys to use if you would like to do it that way, screenshot it, something. Um, so what I'm going to do is press Shift A, and then just like we added the reference image earlier, uh, we want to use images as planes. Now similarly, that is, I believe, still an add-on. So you need to uh, search for it in the add-ons field, and then search for planes, import, export images as planes. So uh, what that will do is basically it will take an image file and just bring it in, automatically apply a texture, make it the right aspect ratio and yeah, do all sorts of good stuff. So press Shift A, image, images as planes, and then I'm going to navigate to where I have that texture, which for me is going to be a label underscore call, which is gonna stand for color. So we won't see that it's been applied here, but if we were to go to our rendered view or to our preview view or to our solid view with textures enabled, you would see that uh, the texture has been cor correctly applied. It's the right aspect ratio and everything, um, but it is a little bit large. So again, keeping this scale set to one, which is what you typically want for objects. I can double check here. That one is one as well. We want to scale this down though, but I'm going to do that in edit mode. So tab S to scale it down. And I'm just going to guesstimate sort of right now and then tab out and see that this scale is still one, and it's a little bit closer to what it needs to be. So that is just fine. So now I played with several ways to wrap the label around the bottle, but the simplest method I found was gonna to be to actually add in a curve object. So I'm gonna press Shift A, add curve, and make that curve a circle, a bezier circle or a nerve circle, I don't think it really matters. Um, but yeah, with that in there, what I'm gonna do next is um, I basically want to use that circle to wrap this label. Now the problem is if we add in the curve modifier, which is, you can go ahead and do that, um, the curve object, since we only have one curve in the scene, it'll just be the only one in that list there. Uh, but you of course could rename this. Probably a good idea to actually name some of these um, objects right now. So I'm gonna press F2 and name that. Let's, what do we name that? Like wrapper curve or something? Yo, my name's Curve. I'm the hottest rapper. <laughs> that was so bad. Okay, so anyways, once you've named it, whatever you name it, Rapper G, Young Slim, Curve, whatever you want to name it, um, it's not working. It's just not working. So you need to press Tab to go into Edit Mode on the Curve. The reason is it's trying to curve like these four points around the entire bottle, which as you can imagine, just doesn't work. So you need edge loops. Same thing we did before, control R, you'll see that little yellow line up here. And then what you can do is scroll up. So I'm just gonna scroll way up, way, 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 way up. Keep scrolling, get plenty of them in there. Nice and curvy, boom, that's good. And then just left click, it allows you to slide it, but with this menu, there's not much sliding to do. And then right click, and that will complete the command. So now we have an absurd amount of uh, division right there. Now, if your bottle was gonna be like bulbous or like some other weird shape, you might need to add some um, edge loops that direction too, but uh, we're not gonna do that. So now that's looking good. Um, now the only thing is it's not curving the right way. So I'm gonna go into the curve modifier and change the deform axis. Uh, curves are a very confusing thing. They just don't do what you want them to do. Um, so you just need to kind of click on all the options. That's a lot. If you know what you're doing, it probably works perfect every time, but I don't know what I'm doing. So uh, I just like to try a few. So that's fine. Uh, it's okay, you know, but it's obviously, it's too big. It's flipped around the wrong way. So 
I'm gonna, you know, but it is curving mostly how I want though. So I'm gonna go into the curve object tab, press A to select everything and then R and X. And then let's spin that around. Don't think that did what I wanted. Actually, that did something I wanted because you can see this is backwards now. It looks like Russian or something. Spin that around and now it's correct. So I'm holding control and then up there in the top left, I can see it's rotating 180 degrees. So that's good. And I think you could also control this with the tilt. I should have just done it with the tilt. Anyways, now I can rotate this on the Y axis and then the X axis. Oh gosh, this isn't really working out for me, is it? Let me need to do the tilt. Okay, so that worked. And then maybe like S, X, Y. Okay, that worked. S, Y, negative one. So yeah, you'll need to move your curve around. Just, you know, you wanna keep it a circle. So if you're gonna scale it on an axis, you know, hold control, make sure you do just exactly negative one. You can change this tilt here to flip it around. Um, just get it in the right orientation. I think I could have also moved the label object, but um, really I want to just, I want to do the changes ideally within the curve. Um, now one thing I will note is I made a point of you know pressing shift C to make sure my cursor was in the middle. When I added that image, it got it added right at the cursor. And then similarly, when I added the circle, it got added right at the cursor. And you want that to be the case. You want the origins to be on top of each other. You can see if they aren't, um, weird things will start to happen. So now I want to be sure I'm moving these objects together when I position them. So I'm pressing G and Z and bringing that up. And you know what? If you just move the curve in edit mode, okay, that appears to work. So it will move it to where it is. Like I gotta say, curves in Blender have always been not a strong suit for me. They can be very frustrating. I'm sure they will be frustrating for you as well. Just take a walk, you know, chill out a little bit if the curves are getting to you. Um, yeah, they're, they're kind of annoying sometimes. So press tab, go into edit mode. I'm just gonna scale this in until it wraps the bottle just the right size. You can see this is where having that straight is ideal. And I'm just gonna get it till I've got kind of that weird glitchiness because um, that tells me that it's overlapping properly. So uh, now what I'm gonna do, I can see that it is much too tall. So I'm gonna press click on that and then tab to go into edit mode and then A to select everything and then scale it down a little bit and then tab out, check it. Um, but if you don't wanna tab in, tab out, you can just tab in and then there's a little button here for display modifier in edit mode. Um, so you can click that and then you can just watch it as you do it. So I'm just gonna get that to right about there. And then let's move them both up together again, GZ. And I think that's pretty good, um, depending on, of course, how much you want it to wrap. This comes a little bit down to preference. Kieran was, uh, was telling me where it should sit. I should probably check my reference there. Um, might as well check my reference there, right? Let's see if we can find our. Bum, ba -dum, bum, bum. Look at all my files. I've got so many files. Dropbox, Dirk, Tutorial, Wine. I'm singing a song. Check my reference. I'm to check it all right now. 3D, test render. And the most recent render would have been this one. Looks like we're, uh, yeah, something like that. Maybe a little bit up, a little bit small, a little bit of a gap. I just want to get it right uh, because. I tend to like to use the exact file from every part of the tutorial in the subsequent parts. So there's no smoke and mirrors, nothing changes. So I'm just gonna get that into about the right position. And of course we can adjust it more later if we want to. So that's on there, that's good. Now what I need to do is add a little bit of thickness to it as paper does have a little bit of thickness. And we're gonna do that with a solidify modifier. So you can see from the outline there, it went to the inside. So let's do the same thing we did earlier there. Flip that to the outside and then just bring the thickness down. Um, and even holding shift, I can't quite get what I want. So I might just type in a value. Let's do 0.05 centimeters, which would be like a half a millimeter or something. Who knows? I live in America. There, <laughs> that looks pretty good. Uh, now the other thing you'll notice is that 
these sections are a little bit larger than these sections we created, which, why is that? Well, it's because the curve object actually has a resolution of its own. So if we select that curve object, you can see the preview resolution and the render resolution are two options. Uh, I believe, yes, if, if, it's, if the render resolution is set to zero, it will use what the preview resolution is. So 12 is not enough. So I'm gonna turn that up to um, just a nice even number like 64, should make it nice and smooth. And now those sections are as big as we made them. And that is going to be probably plenty of um, definition. You know, if you're gonna get insanely close, you might want more than that. But for our purposes, that's gonna be just fine. So we can go ahead and right click, shade that smooth. Um, which is going to make this part look good, but then we've got kind of some weird shading. And that's because similar to the subdivision surface, it's kind of like trying to round something that, you know, wouldn't really make sense to be round. So there is an option down here in the normals called auto smooth, which will tell Blender that, hey, any angles greater than 30 degrees, and you can of course set this, should be sharp. So if we were to go above 90, which is about what those should be, You'll see that they'll get smooth again and that's how that works very convenient honestly the default setting of 30 usually works pretty well but you may need to adjust that depending on exactly what you're working on so this is all together looking good next thing i want to do is add a little bit of a foil top so we're going to do that by selecting our bottle mesh here tabbing into edit mode and then we basically need to kind of i'm going to press alt a to deselect everything we need to just get some of this. We're just going to steal kind of the top section of geometry and make a separate object and you know that will be the foil. So the way I'm going to select that is just pick somewhere. So I know I want from here, so I'm going to do alt and left click to select that edge loop and then I wonder if I can do shift control alt. That didn't really do it. Okay. Um, I was trying to come up with a creative way to select that whole thing. There's like a million ways to select things in Blender. And honestly, um, that's a pretty big skill is, you know, being able to select things the proper or fastest way. So I'm going to press alt and left click to select that edge ring. And I'm going to do control plus, 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 plus to grow the selection. And do we want to go maybe a little further down? I'll do control plus one more time and that will get a nice foil part and we got this extra ring on top which i don't need so i'm going to shift alt left click to deselect that ring so now we have a good little bit of geometry for our foil so what i'm going to do is press shift d to duplicate it similar to what i do with the extrude i just like to pull it out to see that it's there right click will snap it back into place and then with it all still selected i'm going to press p and separate that selection by yeah se separate selection Boom. Now, if I tab out of edit mode, you will see now we have another object. We saw the original geometry on there, of course, but we have this new object, which is going to be the foil object. So let's press F2 and name that the oil. And we didn't name this the bottle. Oh, gotta get that, gotta get that capital B. Nice and fancy. I mean, we're making wine bottles here. We don't wanna be skipping on the punctuation, capitalization, something. Um, so the problem here is, you know, when the subdivision was applied, there was another, you know, ring down here kind of defining that curve. We lost that. So I'm just going to scale this out until it gets to be right about where I want it. And it's okay if it's in a little bit because we are going to add a solidify modifier. Let's go ahead and do that. And let's put that right there and do a little bit of thickness on it. Oops, it's popping out the top. So this is weird. I mean, you could do a negative thickness or you can change the offset to go the other way, which is what I like to do. So similarly here, let's just get like a 0.02 centimeters. And then let's also turn on our auto smooth option. And I'll tell you right now, I use that auto smooth option so much that I actually added it to my quick favorites. So by pressing Q, I can automatically turn on and off auto smooth without even being anywhere near that menu. To do that, if you're interested in doing it yourself, and you can see I don't have a lot of quick favorites. It's literally like the only quick favorite I have. I think there's one other quick favorite that I use in edit mode, which is the edge length. Sometimes I wanna see 
how long edges are. So what we're going to do now is go through each of these dimensions and read them aloud. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Quick favorites. Don't use a lot of them, but you know, when you really, it's your favorite, <laughs> you got to use it. So right click and you can add quick favorites. For me, it's removed because it's already been added. I love you. Auto smooth. Q, auto smooth. Q, by the way, is how you bring up your quick favorites. And you can add like all sorts of stuff to your quick favorites, but I don't have a lot of favorites. It's just that, I guess. So I'm going to press F to fill that in. And now since we, of course, have the subdivision on, it's gonna not going to look so hot. So I'm going to press I to inset. And then let's maybe press, uh, let's, let's add an edge loop here. Bring that up. So the foil's a little sharper around that edge. And now, unless this was like some crazy vacuum form sucked foil, it wouldn't be that tight in the corner. So I'm gonna delete the edge loop there, which will unround that, or it will make it round. And similarly, I'll delete that one. And that might be a slightly more realistic foil, um, you know, or maybe you add it back, but you just kinda, you leave a little bit of and you, of course, don't have to have foil if you don't want it, but I'm a foil kind of guy, I guess. I guess I like the foil. It looks classy. And now this, there would usually be like a cork right there, so I'm going to press I to inset that. Or wait, I'm just going to bring it down a little bit. I don't want it to poke through. Press I one more time. And then I'm just, just trying to make a nice little indention there. Bring that up. There. That'll be very very pretty now you do get some weird shading when you do something like that so you know you can add more insets to kind of curb that but um it's gonna be fine we don't really see too much of that so i think that looks good let's just uh let's just keep adjusting things as i usually do once something is done and you should be moving on i like to continue adjusting things so the geometry is nice Okay, so that's some pretty good looking foil. Um, that's about all we're gonna do for the modeling. Um, I will though, if you're interested, bonus, I'm gonna model the little detailing around the bottom. Of course, you can skip that if you're a beginner. I encourage you to do so. It's more important to just work through a project and finish it than to get hung up on small details. Um, Cause we're gonna get a, you know, it's like slightly more advanced, but if you were gonna look at the bottom of the bottle, Things like this would make the difference. So uh, we will uh, we'll go ahead and do that next after I make more small, pointless, fine adjustments. Like getting that exactly where I want it. Oh, and I didn't mention, if, uh, if your bottle does curve out or you need to curve out, just use this tilt feature. Now, of course, tilt it in a straight line. If the form was much more... Uh, wild than that, you would probably need to use a shrink wrap modifier to get it where you want, but uh, we're not going to be covering that because our wine bottles today are mostly straight, and I think that they look just fine like that. So we'll leave that section at that, and now what I want to do is move on to creating that detail down here on the bottom. So let's go ahead and do that. <laughs> 